We're looking for our latest read on initial and continuing claims. Once again, very low numbers, 211,000. That's down 1,000 from unrevised, 212,000. If we look at continuing claims, they moved up ever so slightly from 1.664 million to 1.676 million. We still have new home sales yet to come. That'll be 10 o'clock Eastern. But welcome to December of 2017, because should 10-year note yields close here at 236, that would be the last time we were at this level. Of course, we all know that we've been really paying close attention to the very mushy yield curve. The long end has been toying with the low yield close of the year, 237 for 10s, 281 for 30s. They have both gone through, not on a closing basis yet, which I always find the most significant, the highest priority if you're a technician. But it certainly hasn't acted very well the last several sessions. And yesterday, for a variety of reasons, maybe it was the Fed, maybe it's hopes of an insurance tightening that probably won't happen. But in the end, we seem to have lost it yesterday after the previous session was at one and a half week highs. We've eased back a bit. Becky, back to you. All right, Rick, stick around. CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman joins us right now, along with our senior markets commentator, Mike Santoli. And uh, Steve, what do you see in the numbers? Well, the job market's strong, and it, it was lost a little bit, and everybody talking about what the Fed's minutes meant about rates, how upbeat they were on the U.S. economy, actually a little bit stronger than your average uh, person on the street there. Uh, and, and the job market, th looking at claims, what do I look at, 228, 212, uh, sorry, two, is that 202? You know, 212, 211. Those are good numbers. Those numbers tell you that the job market remains strong. It's everything else that's the problem. And I thought it would be fun. Well, I'm not fun, <laughs> but you know, in, in, in my fun realm of world for economics, to go back and, and, and let's listen again to what Jay Powell at the press conference said about all the other stuff that was swirling around and how things were getting better. Here's what he said. At the start of the year, <clears throat> a number of cross currents presented risks to the outlook, including weak global growth, particularly in China and Europe, the possibility of a disruptive Brexit, and uncertainty around unresolved trade negotiations. While concerns remain in all of these areas, it appears that risks have moderated somewhat. Okay, so that was May 1. What's happened since then? Brexit's gotten worse. Trade's gotten worse. Iran is added to the list. And global growth, I don't know, the same. There's been some okay global data and some worse global data. I think somebody talked about the European manufacturing this morning being German. bad, German manufacturing being bad. So uh, nothing has got, not very little has gotten better. While, we'll point out, the U.S. growth outlooks remained about the same. We're running 2% on our rapid update. Yeah, that's why in some senses the minutes I think were taken to be a little bit outdated in a sense. It's based on this premise. He said, you know, these, these concerns have moderated. Well, trade didn't moderate since right. May 1st. That's the one uh, that stands out. And I think the market is trying to assimilate what that means. Is this just kind of a new status quo? Is it a stalemate? Uh, are we going to have this kind of slow motion disengagement from, uh, from China economically? Um, whereas before we thought it was just a little bit of a rubber stamp so we could set that issue aside for a while. And, and that means what when you're trying? I mean, uh, has the market reacted to that or is it still in the process? I think the market of... is, is, is still coming to terms with that. I do, I do think it's reacted. I mean, if you really do look at the, at the hardest hit areas, the most directly affected, yes, the market is, is genuinely saying semiconductors have this kind of risk in them. Some of the heavy industrial exporters, absolutely. Apple. Now, what does it mean? Apple, exactly. What does it mean for general global growth? Is it, does it mean you have to raise the probability of something very disorderly happening in the Chinese economy or something like that? That's where we don't know. And I think we also should remember the fourth quarter, which was a market kind of tantrum. Um, and it, it created this sense of a feedback loop into confidence levels and into what businesses mm -hmm. were saying. And all of a sudden, that's what mattered. It wasn't so much that the numbers got worse for the U.S. Hey, Mike, economy, certainly. Mike, I'm wondering if the idea that some of these problems on that list are essentially man-made. I don't mean that in the sexist way, because indeed they are man-made. Um, and they can go away. Does that attenuate how much the market reacts to it? I think when it comes to trade, there was that sense. But Steve. what's not man-made, I guess, is the question. Right? Well, yeah. I mean, if you have, yeah, like, a financial thing where the market has a, a thing of its own, you know, sometimes when you have a recession, it's not exactly clear what the source right. of it is. But you can go back to each one of these it's things and say... It's a policy choice. And these are policy choices that are made. And these are policy choices that can be unmade, whether or not you can put the whatever it is back. Oh, Rick is there. Look, yeah. Rick, I don't want to. Uh, you, you take it over. 
Well, actually, that was my question, what's man-made, but I'd like to even get beyond that. See, the problem is, it doesn't matter what's man-made or what isn't man-made. The problem is, is that men and women have to decide what to do about it. And just take Brexit. Is Brexit a bad thing or a good thing? They're voting. Uh, my feeling is, is that the Fed has all this uncertainty. I get it. But they're never going to be able to divine the outcome any better than you and I. As a matter of fact, their interpretation or fears like Mr. Carney might be completely 180 degrees backwards. We may discover in 10 years that delaying Brexit was the big problem. They should have busted out. They should have turned down the ticket to the Titanic. And they're going to be infinitely better <laughs> off on trade in the big picture. Maybe we're all going to be infinitely better off as the hemispheres relocate and all global trade kind of recalibrate. See, all of this is changing the status quo. That's always viewed as negative by the bureaucrats, and the market doesn't necessarily agree.